What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets with Rob, episode eight. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel and my podcast. Hope you're having a good new year. A happy new year. So the last time I spoke to you, the Mets were uh, one of three finalists for Sugano, the Japanese uh, pitcher, the 31-year-old. Well, recent news, the Mets are out of it. Why? Not really much more information has happened uh, regarding why the Mets are out of it. Could it be years? Could it be money? Could it be too many details within the contract itself, such as Sugano wants an opt-out? Like he, like he would get with the Yomiuri Giants in his contract, but he has an opt-out every year to come to the majors. And he might want that possibility of opting out to go back to Japan. That's a possibility, but we really don't know why he, the Mets are out of it. Is it possible they can be really focused on a big-time starting pitcher, a big-time reliever, maybe both? I don't know. But a couple of days ago, we were one of three finalists, and it just seemed like it would just come down to who he wanted to choose. It seemed like everybody at the moment had offers on the table for him, and he just had to choose. That's why he was coming to the States. So it's kind of interesting to think that the Mets just automatically are out of it, like just like that. Why is that? You know, I was trying to figure out ways to, you know, explain why. And, you know, there wasn't much information from any source, really, that I could find on Twitter, anybody, really. There wasn't much information, except that, you know, the Mets are out. So what does that mean? That means, could the Mets be on, in on Bauer more than we think? Maybe. Uh, could they be in on a big-time reliever? Yes. Because earlier yesterday, after the Sagano news came out that the Mets are out, there was news that the Mets are heavily involved uh, to get Brad Hand. They're very interested in the left-hander. So then you're like, okay, cool. I don't mind that. You know, we need a left-hander in the ballpen. We don't have Wilson, so that should help. You know, we got Blevins on a minor league contract, but we don't know how he's going to do. So it makes sense getting Brad Hand. But here's the other problem. What do you do now if you don't get Sugano and he's out of the picture? You say we sign Brad Hand. The Springer issue is who knows right now. So if I tell you the Mets offseason includes James McCann, Trevor May, Brad Hand, or Jake Goderizzi, will you be happy with that offseason? I wouldn't be. Because my whole issue and my whole thought process going into this was the Mets are probably going to get Riomoto and probably Bow or Springer. Then when we shifted to James McCann, the reason that Sandy gave was James McCann was willing to sign and there was other offers for James McCann. There was nothing going on with Real Muto and him deciding uh, to pick a, pick a team that he would like or negotiate or anything of that nature. And the Mets didn't want to wait or Sandy didn't want to wait, so they signed James McCann. So it's not like they didn't like Real Muto. James McCann was willing to sign him. It was all the off competitive offers for Rio Muto. So I don't, I don't know if the Mets are just losing out because they don't like some terms of a contract in details with Sugano, or the Mets are just getting outbid. Just because we have the richest owner in baseball doesn't mean Sandy is going to give the moon or whatever the player wants to come to the Mets. You know, we can talk about Sandy till the cows come home. Sandy Alderson is a very good negotiator when it comes to contracts. He don't like to give long-term contracts, but he has to move away from that a little bit because you can't just keep on talking, you know, all this stuff about, oh, you know, we can, you know, go into the, the gourmet section of the grocery store now. You can't just say that and then nothing really happens. Yes, I like the McCann move. I'm not 100% happy with it. I really would like Real Muto, but at the end, that's over with. That's you know, that's water under the bridge. Trevor May was a good signing, one of the good, better arms out in the free agent market. But there's nothing really giving me any confidence with this uh, with Sandy Olsen right now. And the reason why I say that is because 
I don't know if he has that same mentality of, I got to, you know, save a few pennies here and there because I don't think that player is worth another million dollars or another year on the contract. Now, we're not talking about, you know, a DJ LeMay who's 32 years old, who you want to give a five-year contract to. You're talking about a center fielder in Springer who is 30, 30 years old, 31 years old, still look like he's in his prime, probably got two, three years really good left before you have to transition to a corner outfield. So I don't see why Sandy is playing his game when it comes to not, you know, getting these plays like Sugano. Like, I understand if the opt-out, if there's an, if Sugano wanted an opt-out after every year of his deal, after every year of, in his contract, that's hard. I, I can see where the Mets would, move away from that but sometimes you have to take some you know lose some and win some when it comes to a contract not both sides are going to be completely happy with it so it's it's interesting to me because I felt like the Mets were going to get Sagano I think they were going to go to I thought they were going to go to Sagano Jake Odorizzi Tyrone Walker two of those three I think that's where they were going so they would have more room to go get one of the bullpen guys, Liam Hendricks or Brad Hand, but it seems like Brad Hand is um, on the radar of the Mets more than Hendricks. And now Sugano's gone. So now it's between Bauer, Odorizzi, and Taiwan Walker as the three that the Mets can potentially get in the free agent market. Now, is it possible because the market really hasn't moved much with Bauer? The Mets think that they can swoop in and you know give them an, a, de- uh, a really competitive offer? Or the Mets are just going to sign Jake Odorizzi and sign Taiwan Walker and go into the season that way. Are you comfortable with that rotation? After DeGrom, who really do you have? You got Marcus Stroman. He's in a contract year. Okay, he might, he'd might probably be a, a good number three starter. But can he boost himself to that big time number two starter? You know, it is a contract year. And a lot of times players in contract years perform better. But we don't know. He, he hasn't pitched in a year at, because he opted out in 2020. He wasn't really good in 2019 when he came over to the Mets. So if you put that into, in perspective when it comes to Stroman, you have 2019, pitched well with the Blue Jays until he came over to the Mets, pitched okay, and opted out in 2020. So he didn't pitch in a year, wasn't very good in the second half of 2019. And now... We're giving him nearly $19 million with that arbitration deal. And he's pitching for a contract. Maybe he will pitch really well. Maybe he'll just be a three or four starter like he's been. So here's your rotation if we don't get Bauer or Sugano. And say if we happen to sign Jake Odorizzi, just one out of the two, out of the three uh, picks out, uh, pitchers out there. Bauer, Walker, and Odorizzi. Say the Mets get Odorizzi. You'll have DeGrom. You'll have Stroman. You have Odorizzi. You have Peterson. And your fifth starter you want to put in Mats until Syndergaard comes back. And who? how do we know what Syndergaard's going to be? We don't. We really don't know. So it's kind of interesting to think that the Mets are going to lose Alan Sagano. We hear about the interest that they have, strong interest that they have in Brad Hand. Fine. I like that. Both said I both in a little more. But you can't have any really big time pitchers in this rotation and then expect the bullpen to, to pick up the slack all the time. Because how many times are you going to have the pitcher pitch four or five innings and then go to your bullpen? You're going to wear your bullpen out in 162 games. You can't just do that. I really think the Mets should, I think it's either going to be Springer or Bauer. I think it's going to be both, but I I really think they have to be careful of what Sandy's doing here because when Cohen's first took over, Mets fans are like, all right, he's going to get the guy he wants, no matter the money, he's going to go get him. Sandy Alderson is not that type of guy, as I said before. So I know Sandy's always calculating how he does this 
to make this move. He always thinks about that, and that's okay. But we have a team that can probably be a contender this year and the next coming years. But what you also have to think about, and, you know, Cohen talked about the three- to five-year period of winning the World Series. You have DeGrom in his prime. He's not getting younger. What does DeGrom have? Two, maybe three great years left? Maybe. You can't be messing around with certain free agents. Oh, I don't want to give him this extra $2 million or this extra $1 million. Maybe I'll give him this extra year just to get the deal done. That's what you see with some teams that really want that guy. Like you've seen, you seen it oh, with the Yankees uh, about 10 years, 10, 11 years ago uh, when they got Sabathia, Teixeira, and Burnett. They wanted them. They got them. They had to give an extra year to Zabathia. They had to give an extra year to Teixeira. They did that. I'm not saying to compare the Mets to the Yankees in this situation, but when you want your guy, and a perfect example is Springer. There was uh, sources out there saying that the Blue Jays made a competitive offer to George Springer five years much lower than $150 million that Springer was looking for. What is that number? Nobody really knows. I'm assuming it's going to be over $100 million. What is it? 110, 120, 130? If the Blue Jays are not going to go any higher than, say, 120 for five years, why don't the Mets just go, you know what? We, we need this guy. We want this guy. Get your man. Give him five years, 140. See if he takes it. But stop, stop playing games and waiting and waiting. I understand nobody's signed. No big guys has signed. But you have to be careful. You really have to be careful. Because the last thing you need is to wait too long. Give, it, give an offer to Springer. And then the Blue Jays come back and says, we really want this guy. I'm giving, this, I'm giving him five years, 160. And we lose out on Springer. And now we have to try to get Jackie Bradley Jr. Or another B or C type player. So now you're out on Springer. Now you lost Sugano. You lost Springer. Now what are the Mets going to say? Now Mets are going to panic and say, all right, we got to go get Bauer now because we lost out on Springer and we lost on Sugano. I mean, there's a time to be patient and there's a time to be aggressive. There's no reason why the Mets cannot be aggressive. You don't have to pay 50, 60, 70 million dollars over to get a player if you really want them. If you know the Blue Jays and you found out their offer, we know it's five years. Say if it's $130 million, go one, five years, 140. See if the Blue Jays counter. Be aggressive. Because it, it, it seems like with Sugano, the Mets were kind of aggressive, but all of a sudden they were like, and then the, the sources were saying, oh, well, you know, their interest was elsewhere. Well, where was that four days ago when the Mets were the, the three finalists to get Sugano? Or was that false reporting? Or was somebody lying in the front office telling these reporters that? So people can focus elsewhere and the Mets will be focused on other guys like Hand or maybe Bauer or Hendricks or whoever, or Odorizzi. So I really don't understand. There's a lot of confu confusion going on. Sandy says one thing, he kind of does another. Cohen's on Twitter fighting with fans. Maybe he's not directly involved in every negotiation because he's leaving Sandy with the baseball uh, position and just making him do baseball decisions. And then going, you know, Sandy might be close on a deal and, you know, need the approval from Cohen. But I, I don't really know what is really going on because I just, I, I don't know. It, it, it's frustrating right now because I really thought the Mets were going to get Sugano. I just thought they were like, you know what? We don't want to pay Bauer $30 million. He might not be, he's probably not worth it. So let's move over to option B and C and get Sugano and maybe put Odorizzi or Walker also. And you could probably get both of those guys with an AAV around the same thing you would pay Bauer for one year. So it's kind of frustrating as a Met fan. And I'm probably, you guys probably are frustrated too it's coming to the point where I feel like the Mets are waiting too long and it seems like nobody wants to set the market, but it's, I get when the Wilpons were owning the Mets, they always wanted to wait for the market and then they'll get the C guy anyway. But at the end of, at the end of the day, the Mets have the money now. You don't have to completely overspend to get every guy you want. But if you know that you want Springer, Cohen wants Springer, Sandy wants Springer, 
And you know the Blue Jays have a five-year, 130 offer on the table. That's a pretty good aggressive first offer. And the Mets come, you know what? George, here we go. His five years, $140 million. Take the contract or go back to the Blue Jays and see if they offer more. If not, sign the contract. Negotiate. Let's go. Like, you know, it's the first week in January. Pitches and catchers is about a month and a half, about a month, month, about almost a month away. So, like, I, I think it's 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 time to be aggressive when we can be. Set the market. Why not? Because guess what? If you set the market for a player you really want, say as the George Springer, let the other teams have to fight for the B player because they want they don't have that center fielder that they need. I mean. I really think that the Mets could have took free agency by the balls and really took advantage of the situation where a lot of teams are not spending because of the pandemic. They could have taken that whole situation and made it, made them focus on setting the market when it comes to free agency. What happens? Two weeks ago, the Mets go five years, 150. Springer, there you go. Put it on the table. Offer him that. If he says no, all right. See if you can get more than that. If you're not, come back around. Be aggressive with it. Maybe they have, and we just, nobody has really found out all the information yet. But it, it seems like Sandy is waiting for the market to develop when he doesn't have to anymore when he was with Oakland, when he was with the Mets, when the Wilpons owned the team. He always seemed like he waited for the market to start and to develop so he has a better idea about the numbers. Why don't you set the market? Let other people worry about that. Stop worrying about this now. Let's go. We have the money. Let's do it. We got the best pitcher in baseball for, another, for a couple more years. Might be the best pitcher in baseball for two, maybe three more years. Take advantage of it. Stop waiting around. Oh, you know, I don't want to give them this. I don't want to give them that. Let's get young players. You know what? You can still draft and sign players that are 30 years old. There's no, there's no reason why you can't do that. That's like the whole thing. Oh, we got to build off our farm system. What does that have to do with giving Springer $150 million or giving Bauer $30 million or getting Brad Hand? It has nothing to do with it. When the draft comes, you draft them. And you develop in the minor leagues. So this whole thing where, oh, you know, I, I get trying to make trades and getting guys. We don't have that type of farm system to go out and make big trades after big trades like the Padres did. But we don't need to make trades. There's guys out there that you can get for just money. That's it. We really have to focus on being the aggressor. Let's not be stuck in a corner and being scared to spend and set in the market. We're not that we're not that Mets team anymore. We're not the Wilpons anymore. We are the Cohen's Mets. We have the money. Be aggressive. Stop messing around and waiting and waiting and waiting until a team sweep, swoops in, takes them from you, and now you have to have plan B and C. Why do we have to worry about plan C? We can clearly get A. It just it, it boggles my mind and it's frustrating. Because two days ago. The Mets were one of the likely teams to sign Sugano. Now, if we got outbid because we, we, ha- we didn't want to go over a certain amount by the Blue Jays or the Giants, fine, okay. Or the offers are similar and Sugano just didn't want to come to New York, fine. He wanted to go to the Giants, which is a big Asian population, fine. That's okay. At least the Mets seemed like they were aggressive. But to be out when the Giants and the Blue Jays are still in it to get them, Seemed like the Mets didn't want to go the little bit of extra mile to get Sugano. And again, we don't know why the Mets are out of it. Maybe the details will come out after Sugano signs or goes back to Japan, whatever. So I really think the Mets lost out on the opportunity to move away from Springer. I'm sorry, to move away from Bauer 
focus on Springer, get Sugano, and Odorizzi or Tyron Walker. I think that would be a better way to allocate the rest of the money that we have under the uh, under the salary cap to use to get Springer, Odorizzi, Tyron Walker, and possibly Brad Hand. That's a good way to end that offseason with uh, acquiring players. If I told you we, we got McCann, we got May, we got Hand, we got Springer, we got Odorizzi, we got Tyron Walker. I'd be happy with that offseason. It wasn't the big offseason that we expected, you know, the real Muto and Springer and probably a, a Brad Hand and a Jake Odorizzi. But you know what? I can live with that because I think our offense would be fine. But putting Springer in that lineup is a big freaking deal. So to go with the, the current roster and what we have right now, there was a lot of uh, back and forth on Twitter the last couple of days between Pete Alonzo and Dominic Smith with the fans. There's been a lot of people that says, let's keep Dominic Smith, play him at first and trade the, uh, Pete Alonzo. Now, number one, why would the Mets trade Pete Alonzo, even if they decided that Dominic Smith's going to be the better player all around in his career than Alonzo? Why would the Mets trade Alonzo after Alonzo had a, a really bad 2020? So his price is way down because of the bad year in 2020. Yes, he got a couple of years left before he make, really makes the big money, before he becomes a free agent. But do you really think that the Mets will get a really big deal for Pete Alonso, even if the Mets thought about trading Pete Alonso and keeping Dom Smith at first? But are we going to have to worry about that? Because if the Mets don't sign Springer and they keep Nemo in center field, Dominic Smith's our left fielder. And that solves the problem, no matter if the DH is there or not. So I think everybody's got to calm down it's never bad to have utilization for, for Dominic Smith and Pete Alonso and piggyback at them when it, there's a lefty pitcher or a righty pitcher. It's important to have depth in this, in, on this roster. Are you really going to complain if one day Dom's in a lineup and Alonso's not because there's a, a, a really good right-hander that Alonso has trouble with? So you put Smith on first base that day. And, and when the pitcher comes out and the reliever comes in and maybe they bring in a lefty to face Smith, you have Pete Alonso coming off the bench in the later innings. What's so bad about that? And vice versa. If Alonso starts when there's a lefty pitching that day and in the later innings, they bring in a, a hard-throwing, tough right-handed pitcher from the bullpen, you bring up Smith. There's no problem with that. Smith is probably going to come in for de defensive purposes anyway if we're in the lead in the later innings. So why, why do we have to trade him? Why don't we just utilize him better? I mean, why not? Rojas, you know, has got to utilize the players that he's got. We, th this team does not have to do much. Sandy doesn't have to do too much. If you can add Springer and put him in this lineup, Moving Nimmo to left, your defense gets better in the outfield. When it comes to the infield, depending on who's the pitcher, if it's a right-hander or a left-hander, you can put Smith in left in uh, first base, or you can put Alonso if there's a, a left-hander in there. You can use that at third base with Davis. You know, there's some people that don't like Davis, don't think he's a really good third baseman. I think he's okay. I think you you're using his bat more and utilizing it better than him defensively. He got better last year at third base when they put him back there. I think that was a good move by Rojas, putting J.D. Davis and giving him the confidence to play third base. You know, he's, you know, he's not great. He's not going to probably be a gold glover, but he's all right. Now, there was a little, little talk on Twitter about maybe Alonzo can practice a little bit at third. I mean, I believe he did that in college a little bit, but do you really want Alonzo to take that next step and now he has to learn third base 
at the major league level, you know, you can try it at spring training and see how it goes. Just, you know, to give you more flexibility uh, with the roster, especially with Smith, because obviously Smith's the better first baseman. But there's nothing wrong with keeping Alonzo and keeping Smith. You can utilize him really well in a 162-game season. You know, Pete Alonso is probably not going to play 162 games. You know, he'll get days off. You're going to have, you know, interleague play where you can DH one of the guys. So you can still utilize him without trading him. Because you want to trade Alonzo, he had a bad 2020. His price is going to be lower, even though he has a couple of years left on that rookie contract. So it's really hard to believe that the Mets would trade Pete Alonso. He became the face of the franchise in 2019. So it's, I, I think you just keep Dom, you keep Pete Alonso, and you just go right into it. So, again, with the free agency, I'm really upset that Sugano is not on the Metro Radar anymore and they're out of it. So, that sucks. But, Maybe they are focused on getting Brad Hand and Jake Odorizzi, and maybe they are really in on Springer. We just haven't heard enough about it. You know, the Blue Jays set the market for Springer now. They put a five-year deal at the very least. So San Diego don't have to sit around anymore and wait until the market to set. Now they see the offer on the table. Maybe the, the Mets will counter. Maybe San Diego counter with a better offer for Springer, and Springer makes his decision. Let's not keep waiting, because the longer you wait, you're going to lose out on some of these guys that you want. And that can be very bad. And the offseason that we expected is going to be a disaster. You can't go in when not signing one of the big free agents. You just can't. Do you consider McKen the big free agent? No. The big three big free agent guys out there are Springer, Bauer, and Riomoto. Quickly, Riomoto uh, wasn't an option when the Mets signed McKen. So Bauer and Springer out there. We got to get one of them. I really think we have to get one of them to shore up the rotation or shore up the lineup with one of them. Springer, you're going to shore up the lineup. Bauer, you're going to shore up the rotation. So I think the Mets really, in the next week or two, really need to be more aggressive. I think the Mets are going to make an offer to Springer very soon, knowing that the Blue Jays made an aggressive offer of five years, much lower than 150, but we know it's five years. So hopefully in the coming days, the Mets get a little bit more uh, aggressive. Maybe they'll sign Brad Hand in the coming days and focus their uh, attention on Springer. And hopefully we have a, be- a good offseason so we can be happy with it, so we can focus on the season and focus on spring training coming in a month. So don't forget, guys, uh, check out my YouTube channel. It's on all my social media pages. Just click on the link. Make sure you watch, subscribe. Uh, you can uh, check my podcast out. Also, on anywhere you listen to your podcast, thank you for listening, and let's go Mets.